Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest bread recipe. And in this one, I'll show you how to make this fantastic no-need rustic country loaf. It's a very simple bread to make and full of flavour. An ideal all-round bread, especially good for your sandwiches. And as it's a no-need recipe, all you need to make this bread is a mixing bowl and a baking tray. And I've designed this low hydration loaf so it's a nice and easy one to handle, shape and score. A great recipe for beginners and experienced bakers alike. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. I'd also like to thank my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thanks supporters for their very kind help in producing these tutorial videos. I'll be giving you all a name splash and shout out a little later in the video. Right, let's get on with today's recipe. OK, as always, I'll start by testing that my yeast is alive and well. First, add the sugar to the warm water and mix until dissolved. And now add your yeast to the water and give that a good mix too. Right, set that aside until it activates. If there's no change after 10 minutes, your yeast must be dead and it needs replacing. OK, my yeast has now been sitting for 5 minutes and as you can see, the yeast is working fine. And that means it's safe to start this no-need recipe. Add the mixture to a large bowl and making sure that you scrape it all out. Now add the bread flour to the bowl. And the final ingredient to go in is the salt. Right, using my trusty wooden spoon handle, I'll bring it all together. A quick word on no-need bread recipes. A lot of people think this is just a lazy way of making bread, and they would be very wrong. To cut a long story short, by allowing the yeast to work its magic naturally on the flour, instead of quickening the process by kneading the dough, you end up with a better flavour and texture to the bread that you're making. The only downside is it takes a little longer, but I think it's well worth the wait. If you Google a question, you'll be able to find out a lot more on no kneading versus kneading. Once you have it roughly together, swap to a bowl scraper and start folding it over itself as shown. And as this is quite a dry mix, you can finish it off with your hand. And remember to scrape all of the flour from the sides of the bowl. Once you're sure there's no dry flour pockets left in the dough, lift it out and grease the bowl with a little cooking oil. This simply allows the dough to release from the bowl easier after the proof. It also prevents the dough from drying out. Now get it back into the bowl and cover it. I like to use a shower cap for this and we have a good selection of these in various colours and patterns in the website store if you're interested. Now set the bowl aside in a nice warm spot. I normally use the oven with the light bulb on but as the weather is glorious in the UK today I'm just proving mine on the bench. Now set your timer for one hour. Right, time's up on the first proof. And as you can see, the dough has risen nicely. Now pull it out of the bowl and onto the bench. And start to knock the dough back. This simply means knock all of the built up gas out of it. And like I said earlier, this is a low hydration dough so it's quite easy to handle without adding flour. Form the dough into a ball, as shown. Now get the dough back into the bowl. Cover it. Now set your timer for 40 minutes this time. OK, once the time's up, turn the dough out onto the bench again. And once more, knock the dough back. Try to fold your dough the same as I'm doing in the video.
Once you've got your dough folded, form it into a ball. Now at this point you can simply place the dough ball in the middle of a greased baking tray. Add a little flour, cover it and then allow it to proof for 45 minutes. But for a more professional look, I'm going to final proof mine in this Banneton basket instead. The loaf will look so much better out of one of these. And only if you're interested, we have a couple of choices on the website, including this great offer of a bread making bundle, which includes two of these brilliant Banneton baskets, one round, one oval. Everything you need to get started on commercial yeast and sourdough bread making. If you are using a proofing basket, make sure it's well floured as shown. Now place your dough ball in the middle of the basket or the tray, whichever you're using, and sprinkle on a little flour. Now using a dry, lightweight cloth, cover it and allow it to proof for 45 minutes. Before going any further, preheat your oven to 190 Celsius, that's 375 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 5. You'll also need to place a pan of hot water on the bottom shelf of your oven. The steamy atmosphere this creates in the oven will make the bread nice and crispy. Right, once the final proof is finished, and if you're using the basket method, turn it upside down onto a greased baking tray. Give it a little shake and it should drop straight out. If you feel there's a little too much flour on the dough, simply sweep it off using a pastry brush. Nice and gently though. Right, whether you're using a baking tray or a basket, it's time to score the dough. And with this being a low hydration recipe, it should score very easily. Scoring the dough allows it to expand in the oven. Try to design your own scoring pattern. Time to get this beauty into the preheated oven. Now to save you getting a blast of steam in the face, open the oven door slowly. Especially if you wear spectacles like me. Once the dough safely in the oven, you can set your timer from anywhere from 25 to 40 minutes, depending on how hard or dark you want the crust of your bread. We prefer the crust quite light and crispy rather than dark and hard. Entirely up to you. And while that's baking, I hope you don't mind if I give my four recipe books a quick shout out. The books have lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in them. And also, book 4 in this series is totally dedicated to bread recipes. And by popular demand, the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you to the website shop where all of these items are available now. Ok, time's up on this gorgeous bread. Once again, open the oven door slowly. And it's looking great. And there's nothing better than the aroma of freshly baked bread drifting through your house. A good way of determining the bread is done is to tap the bottom with the inside of your thumb. It should sound hollow like a drum. Now place the loaf on a wire rack and if you can, let it cool for 20 minutes or so. And when I come back, I'll cut a couple of slices off and of course have a little taste. Right, it's still a little on the warm side, but I can't wait any longer. And just listen to how wonderful that sounds. Now that sight, smell, sound and touch, as it feels so light and warm in your hand. Fresh bread seems to please all of your senses. And of course, the best one is to come, which is the taste. And with just a little butter, it tastes absolutely gorgeous. I hope you give this very simple loaf a try, everyone. I'm absolutely certain your whole family will love it. Big thumbs up for this one, guys. And as promised at the beginning of the video, here is the latest list of my Patreon, PayPal and Super Thank You button supporters. And they are Stephen Threlfall, Carl Chance, Christopher Robin, Denise Shook, Lee Daly, Lydia McLeod, Gary Starlin, Squishy Boots, Mark Comiskey, Vanessa Bennett, James Kay, Margaret Davis, The Doctor 1225, Maria Brent, 
George Schmidt, 9153, Kaya, 1111, Jeremy Larkin, 5867, and finally, ALMA, at the Arts Language Music Academy, Forest Park, Illinois. Thanks very much, guys. I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.